beautiful instruments as well. Thank you. Thank you, ministry support team, all the team members for all that you have done over the last three or four weeks, just moving us completely into the fellowship hall and then moving us back in here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, team out there, thank you so much for all the hard work in the name of Jesus. Thank you. And uh, Pastor old team, thank you. You know what I mean when I say that. I'm so thankful to serve the Lord with you. We humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. We do the work that must be done to give him glory. And then he receives glory in the midst of it all. And uh, so, yeah, how do you like the new carpet? Doesn't it look beautiful? Yay! Just hang on. It's a little wet in some areas. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> the auditorium got a little bit wet. You are on temporary carpeting. If you look on the walls, you will see that the cove base that's at the bottom, in some areas it's there. And in some areas it's not. That's where the carpet has to come back up. It's in a temporary state at this time. It had to be pulled up in order to mitigate the little bit of wetness. It wasn't too bad in here. The lobby, on the other hand, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> upstairs, oh, my God. But none of the equipment got ruined. Um, thank you, God. Um, our insurance uh, company, to this point, is really awesome. We'll find out when they get all the bills, okay? But they've been great. And the U Church pay bills. And thank you for being generous over many, many years, 25 years of God's favor, to always put us in a place where we could pay for good coverage and take care of things. You have to take care of what God's given you and be a good steward. And we have. We had an accident. And uh, everything was finished on Wednesday, March something or other, then March something or other the next day. I know what the day was. You know, don't bring it up. I'm just kidding. The accident happened upstairs, and if you, any of you heard me online a couple weeks ago on March 6th, I shared with you a little tiny elbow. And uh, yeah. We had a little bit of water come out. Thank you, God. The sprinkler system never was charged or ignited, ever. It wasn't a fire event. Thank you, God. Our backflow system, so that you know, very simply, you sit in a commercial building that has a sprinkler system, of course, that is dry at all times. But if you mess it up, it becomes wet really fast. Bobby told me before he went home to see the Lord that he wanted to see Victoria Falls again. <laughs> he hasn't been able to get over to Africa for a long time. He doesn't know if he'll ever get back. So Victoria Falls was inside the building. Nobody in here, but then he showed up. What do you want me to do? Get out of here! <laughs> and he just stood there and went, oh my goodness. It's rain and showers and it was Victoria Falls. Whew. Anyway, thank you, God. No one got hurt. Amen. Ceiling tiles can be replaced. Right. Carpet can be replaced. And it will be taken care of. And all that you have put into this remodel and all the, the giving over all the years and even specifically over the last few months, this is our brand new carpet. It's beautiful and it looks great and I love it. And if you have coffee in here right now, I'm coming after you. <laughs> Water is good. Everything else, eh, 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 eh. That diet Dr. Pepper, eh, 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 eh. But this is our new auditorium. Thank you, God. We had a couple little things to do. Uh, a little bit of sound will be done. This is 20 years old, so we're working on that. And again, all the donations that you have given so generously, we... Uh, Hope to be done soon, a few weeks. In the meantime, let's keep on doing it. We gather together. Uh, hey, Doc, good to get the investors back together again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Did they miss you at all? Yeah. That no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> now, did you miss them? Did you did you miss them? Oh, Amen. It always works that way. I miss you. Eh, you know, did you miss me? Eh. <laughs> Amen. But it's good to get together. Our young families got together at 
9 o'clock. We have, of course, our Sunday groups meeting right now. The youth group's getting together, and so praise the Lord. They've been getting together at, house, at their houses of the youth leaders over the last couple of Wednesdays, so we've been continuing. We got uh, our Bible Institute back going, and uh, Bible studies are cranked up again, and uh, so we're headed. The women's conference is coming. Men's conference last week, praise the Lord for what God did in your hearts and lives. See, Doc, same response. God didn't do anything. Hallelujah, it's okay. Did you miss me? No, you didn't miss me. It works that way. This can be interactive, you know. We can do this, right? <laughs> Don't fall asleep out there. Sheesh. Let's have a half an hour of prayer. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter number 12. We're coming to the conclusion of the whole matter. So here we are in chapter number 12. In our study of search for purpose and everything, you realize that, wow, you couldn't have a greater illustration. So all of you can seek and search and see if you can find the purpose for it all. It can be anywhere from, hey, it was an accident, and thank you, God, for proving yourself faithful. And I, I like that. Or you could come up with some intricate, woven-in message that you have and send me an email on that. I get some wonderful emails now and then, so... Don't feel bad if you send me an email and explain everything to me. But uh, very simply, there are things that are going to happen in the course of a day. We know sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof from Matthew 6, 34. All things, also in Romans 8, it says, all things work together for good, that them that love God, to them are called according to his purpose. I can't tell you how beautiful it was to see all the people that were involved in moving everything this way, moving everything that way, and all the work that was done. The people that did the carpet originally put all brand new carpet in from here and all the way over there. If you, if you, the whole north wing was all done. All the kids' stuff, nursery, so butterflies, caterpillars, toucans, all of it was done. So just know that that part of our remodel, we'll finish it up, we'll get it redone and it'll be taken care of. But just remember, in all of that, what was the purpose of it all? Hallelujah, because those carpet people, they, they came in and put some things together Thursday and Friday, stayed extra hours, put new stuff in here. Now, I don't know if you like the stuff in the lobby, but I think it's pretty good, so I think we're going to leave it there. What do you think? <laughs> I guess you don't want to go with that. Okay, okay. But here we are. Now we'll have to have new carpeting in the lobby. And that's okay, new ceiling tile, unless you like seeing all the exposed wires. You can jump up, have the kids jump up and grab them. That's okay, but, but yeah, let's search for the purpose. Well, something very unfortunate happened and something very fortunate happened, and that was God pouring out his grace on us. For the emergency vehicles, if you wondered, there's a fire department right there. Anybody notice? They were here like that in two or three minutes and they shut the system off, and Serve Pro was here in 20 minutes. By 4 o'clock, they were here, and they began. So I just want you to know that I called Dwayne. He was having a ball with his little granddaughter. Hey, I need you out. What's wrong? Well, I had a little accident. You got to come see it. Yeah. What have you done, Brownie? But again, purpose. I just uh, had the joy of seeing God's people. Whew. Rally again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and I thank you. The cleaning crew yesterday, wow. Place is beautiful. It even smells good, too. And again, it goes back to thank you, God, from the carpet people to everybody else, the cleaning crew, all the people that move stuff, um, all of you that move Bobby's furniture into, the, into his office. He'd like to have it all rearranged, so if you can meet him after church... Just kidding. He's very thankful, and we all are very, very thankful for all that you have done. In Ecclesiastes 12, and we're going to get into it here in a moment, we're going to finish up our study, as I said earlier, and we've been in our study in the whole book, and again, some of the things that are there, they really line up with spirit life and how they are proverb proverbs that really are on the money. Then there's other things you go, well, that doesn't line up with the rest of the Bible. Well, it's coming again from a man who is away from God. He's working through these life principles and values. He's working through all these matters of 
employment, employer, employ, employees, work, job, finances, family, relationships. God's in there a little bit, but then he goes through so many things. Authority, how do you respond, how to be a servant, how to do the things that we ought to do. And he's been doing that throughout our 12, 11 chapters and now our 12th chapter. And when you think again of what God is working us through in this study, you realize all things are put in here. This word, all things, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness that the man of God may be perfect. Solomon's given us great insight into a person's life that can backpedal, fall away from God, write beautiful Proverbs, write beautiful Song of Solomon, as I said. And they get to a place where he opens up in Ecclesiastes chapter number one and says what? I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. And of course he states, this sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. Every single Week that we've been in the study, we've read that passage because it's a theme verse. It is a theme. I mean, don't forget the verse right before it, and we'll see it repeated again in this chapter as he finishes it out. He mentions vanity over 30 times. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. In verse number two of chapter one, just before, he says, Hey, I put my whole heart into this to seek and to search out my wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven, and of course he realizes over the course of time as we land at chapter number 12 that the condition of the lost man, the condition of the out of fellowship with God, saved man, puts him in a place where the person says, hey, it's a sore travail to try and figure things out. God did this, it's God's fault, really? God may have allowed things in your life, and God of course is overall, and he's sovereign and providential, yes, but a lot of things are principles from the Word of God and from life that when you do such and such, such and such will be a result. We have learned a great principle that is simple and comes out of Galatians. Whatever you sow, that you will reap. Of course, Solomon covers that as well in here. Many, many principles of life. And when you leave God out and this search for purpose, this search for getting after things, this search for finding things, and you put your whole heart into it, leaving God out under the sun and under heaven, it can be very frustrating. For you this morning, who may be trying to search things out and seek things out, I'm just not satisfied. I'm just not happy with things. I'm not fulfilled. I, this God thing is good, and I liked it for a while, but now I don't know. Or... I'm going after this God thing, and, and it's okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm fulfilled. Sometimes I'm not. Well, that brings us to chapter number 12, because that's Solomon telling you and I, this is how you can be fully satisfied in him. Fully satisfied in him. That's the title of our message today, that you can be all set, satisfied. The simple meaning of the word is to be fulfilled, to be sated, to be filled, to be enriched to have an excess. Some of you are full and full with excess, but you're satisfied in someone else. Your excess and your satisfaction is fleeting. One day you're satisfied, the other day you're not. That's you being satisfied with you. Just be honest with yourself for a moment. Just be really straight with you. You don't even have to turn to God right now, which he's next. Just to be honest with you. Your satisfaction in life is fleeting. Half the day you're happy, half the day you're not. Half the day you're fulfilled, half the day you're not. I'm talking about moods come and things happen and emotions, they're real. So they're good, that's good. Thoughts, your mind working, those are good things. God gave those to you. It's a physical condition. It's real. But can I be satisfied? <coughs> can I be satisfied in the midst of just regular, crazy life stuff. Yes. And Solomon says, I want you to grab a handle of some wisdom-filled words at the end of my Ecclesiastes preaching message. He's been arguing with himself. He's been presenting things to the people and then arguing matters of life and issues, working through stuff and going, 
Sometimes I feel good about it. Some days I don't. Does that sound familiar? Some days you're like that. But when you look right inside with you and God, you and I need to be at a place where we're fully satisfied simply in him. I have learned in whatsoever state I am. Yes, I got it. How about just being simply satisfied with whatever comes? I'm not saying just, ah, I'm glad with being backslidden. I'm glad, glad that I'm being out of fellowship with God. I'm just satisfied with being an absolute wretch to my husband, my wife, my family members. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Holy Spirit, Word of God, Jesus' salvation, and sanctification sanctified in him. That's what Solomon's teaching us today. It says in Proverbs 12, 11, He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Proverbs 12, 14. You can write that address down if you want and look it up later. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Great principle. I love that Solomon wrote these. How am I satisfied? Here's a good one. Or maybe not so good. Proverbs 14, 14 says, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. The word filled there is the same Hebrew word translated as satisfied. A backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. When I'm backslidden, I'm filled with my own ways. I know it's an Old Old Testament principle, so when I'm out of fellowship with God, I'm just doing my own thing. Yeah, I'll give myself a pass. You sin today a lot, you mess, you're just a mess. Or I just say, I'm not going to be transparent with you today, Lord. I'm not going to be honest with you. I'm not going to be real with you. I'm not going to be real with myself. And I'm just kind of satisfied that way. I'm filled with my own ways. The other side of the proverb, it says, a good man shall be satisfied from himself, apart from himself, in the Lord. Hell and destruction, it says in Proverbs 27, are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. I want something better. That's Proverbs 27, 20. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. Boy, that's true. How can we have a completely satisfied life tomorrow that seemingly today is purposeless? Solomon's going to show us here in a few minutes. How can you? You don't want to put a question out there that God can't take care of. Well, God can take care of it. How can I, how can we be completely satisfied with life tomorrow? Well, we've looked at life, this whole series, this whole study. He says, hey, for us to remember God in the days of our youth, which is part of that satisfaction, it would mean we heeded the advice of the old. Are you satisfied? Do you remember God? Because this guy Solomon, near the end of his life, 70-ish years old, is saying, don't forget God. How many of you forgot God this week? Don't raise your hands. I'm not saying for a moment or driving down the road. I'm just talking about maybe for a day or two or three, you you forget you're a child of God. You forget you're a son of the Father in heaven. You, You didn't remember God. You didn't take time alone. It says in Ecclesiastes 11 from last week, a really neat principle about the young. In fact, it wasn't last week. It was two weeks ago, March 6th, last time I preached But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness. The days of darkness are when you get old. For for any of you that are a little more mature in age, you understand. Things don't seem to have as much light. Things are a little cloudier. You need 3.25s to read. For they shall be many, what? The days of darkness. It's amazing. Hey, the teenage years are 13 to 19. Oh, I can't wait to grow up. I hate being a teenager. Well, you ought to enjoy it. It's only seven years. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Didn't know I was that good at math. See, I use my fingers. My daughter, Christine, gets paid a lot of money to do that as an auditor by just doing this. 
now she's married and married. She married a rich guy, so she's all set. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I don't know. But you think about what it says in the next verse. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy, chir- thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. This is chapter number 11. In the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Hmm. Verse number 11 and four, uh, 13 and 14. We'll get there in a minute. You see, there's a great profound statement that Solomon's making. That you will be fully satisfied in life. Remember I talked about two weeks ago, we have a blessed life. We are so blessed, and yet we just go, oh, thanks God for that blessing, let me have some more. How about you could live off of the blessings that God has given you over the last week? They're incredible. Men, that old song, count your blessings, name them one by one. How about when you ran that song out today about satisfied, I peeked into the saw that you were, no, I didn't, fully satisfied. Be thou my vision. We're satisfied in him because he satisfies us. That's Jesus. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart. Put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and and youth are vanity. They are. Again, they're nothing and they're meaningless without the Lord. This guy knows that. He grew up in the palace with his father, David. He saw it all. He knew of his great counselor, Ahithophel, filled with wisdom, turned on him. Solomon knew it because he grew up with King David, his papa. He probably knew of a lot of other bad things that happened. That Joab, his (laughs) right-hand army man, went and took some people out for King David, and he heard the stories. See, Solomon knows of the bad and the good, and he knows. For childhood and youth are vanity if you waste them, and they're nothing, they're meaningless. Henry Ford said this, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. Can you imagine someone who made Ford trucks saying something like that? All you Ford guys. I'm a Ford guy, so I turned my back on my dad and Ford's and bought a Pathfinder. I think he, when I did that, he came back from the grave and haunted me for a week. I don't know. (laughs) Went against the Ford guy. What's a great statement? D.L. Moody said this. Preparation for old age should begin not later than one's teens. A life which is empty of purpose until 65 will not suddenly become filled on retirement. You better get it together, young people, soon. You don't want to be at an age where 60, 65, 70, you got all the excuses. Oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm old, I can't do that. Well, that's what Solomon's covering. Solomon was getting older, and yet he still had to strengthen the energy, and he was the king of the nation of Israel. There was no one wiser, no one richer, no one that had more chariots and horses. He went against Deuteronomy, he was against the word of God, and he had everything, and yet he thought it was all vanity. How can you not, and I cannot learn from this wisdom that's in the Word of God? We can, because we can be fully satisfied. What will be the defining moment or series of events that shifts your view on life? Are you going to shift your view on life and be fully satisfied in the Lord and what he has for you? Are you just going to reject those incredible God-speaking moments into your life? Because this message isn't just for young people. It's for all of us to take the word of God at value and say, this is what God is telling me. If I've wasted this many years and I forgot the creator in my youth and now I'm at this age where I've been a believer in the Lord for 40, 50 years and I've kind of worshipped him and I've kind of walked with him and I've kind of looked in his word and I've kind of, whoo, uh-uh, let's go. All together, let's go. There was a meeting at noon with our missions pastor in the coffee house to go on a mission trip to Oaxaca. Be there. You're of age. Don't let your young years go past you. To be fully satisfied in him, to be completely fully satisfied in him, 
What would that look like for us? It would look like what Solomon's teaching us today. And be reminded of what I read earlier. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. A good man shall be satisfied from himself. Solomon wrote that. He also wrote this. Ecclesiastes 12, verse number 1. Let's cover verse 1 and 2. Then we'll take 3 through 7 as a package. We'll do 8 through 12. We'll finish with 13 and 14. First place of our devotion reading this morning in the Word of God as a church. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Very simple, very straightforward. Bring attention to God. While, now here's the warning stuff. While the days come not, excuse me, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. It's coming. Promise. As the days move on. Life, things like that. Verse 2 says, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. Very simply, off of our first couple of verses, I want you to realize that Solomon is saying there's some reasons to remember God. There's some reasons to think about God. Again, pay attention to him. Consider the intention of just obeying him. Think about him. I think about, again, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. We talked about that, preached to it two years ago, I think a couple years back. In there, one of the favorite verses, Matthew 6, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's what he's saying. Remember now the creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Very simply this. When Solomon says, hey, I'm pushing you. I'm admonishing you. I want you to look at the gift of life and learn that God needs to be at the centerpiece of it when I have left him out of life for so long. Woo. There's nothing like a person to speak truth into your life. That's experienced both sides. The side of really walking with the Lord and the side of not walking with the Lord. I wish this didn't happen, but it does. Every once in a while, the distance from God increases. Solomon's very simply saying that. It's easy sometimes to neglect the Lord when you're caught up with self-satisfaction. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. Let me go do this and go do that. There's nothing wrong with some of the things that God has given you to enjoy. But dark days are coming. Remember verse number 8 of chapter number 11? The difficult days, the evil days are coming. So you know what? It might be good at a young age or a younger age to lay some foundation, some spiritual foundation. I do premarital with young couples that are getting married. We spend time on building a foundation. Four cornerstones. Four pillars of your marriage with Jesus Christ out of Ephesians 2 and out of 1 Corinthians 3 being your chief cornerstone. You need some pillars. And you need to have some reasons to remember God because, guess what? As the preacher says, you better not forget him. I understand what happens. It says in Psalm 20, some trust in chariots and some in horses. You know this one, many of you. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. David said that. That's the father of Solomon. We tie them both together quite a bit. In our conclusion, we will do the same. Verse number three, four, five, and on. Now take a look at this list here. Verse three through seven. Just, just capture this real quick. There's a lot here. I'm just going to over, oversee it a little bit, kind of walk through it. But this is like having a vessel that's breaking down. Now none of you as an older person would take that personally, would you? We're actually talking about a horse, I mean, I mean a house. Not a person, just joking. It is relating to you and me. Solomon is using the idea of a house breaking down and relating it to the vessel that we are for the Lord. Verse number three says, In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, the strong men shall bow themselves. And the grinders cease because they are few. Those that look out of the windows be darkened. Very simple, isn't it? The grinders don't work. Right? Your teeth. 
can't eat any food anymore. It's a bummer when you go to get a steak and you can't chew it. That's why I went and got some false teeth. Aren't you guys happy to be living in the 20th, 21st century? Yeah. But he's writing in a time when the teeth fall out. We'll get there in a minute. Verse 5. Excuse me, verse 4. The door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Interesting. You know, when you get a little bit older, you, you hear the birds, they're chirping, and you're going, I wish you birds would just be quiet. Just shut up and just leave me alone. They're God's beautiful creatures. Well, when you get old, you don't like having them wake you up, do you? Grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. And then you get so grumpy that it says here, all the daughters of music shall be brought low. What happened to that praising that you had at a young age? Now you're older and I don't need to sing. I'm over 60. And when I get to 70, <laughs> if they try to make me sing, <laughs> I ain't singing. Part of it is what you're going to read now. Watch. Because there is something going on in here as you get older. The pain of life, the heartache of life, the reality of life. I don't have anything to sing praises about anymore. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. We can sing praises. But he's warning what happens if we forget the creator in our youth and develop something at a young age that just overflows into our old age. Because old age is going to mess with you. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Because man goeth to his long home. What's the long home? Eternity. And the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, verse number 6. Or the golden bowl be broken. Very simply, the things that used to hold together and stay together. Just simply that silver cord and that gold bowl. Light that candle inside there to light the house. And all of a sudden, things just start falling apart in the house. Things just start to fall apart in you. And if you're young and things aren't falling apart, hold on to it. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. It says, of course, as it continues, that golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, right? Our bodies return to the earth. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Very simply, the reality of death is before you, everybody. The reality of death is here. It's a picture of us as a vessel falling apart as we get older. And when you consider again everything that's being related to the physical, related to a house or a vessel, related to something that is aging, you realize an old age time, it's tougher to serve God. Well, serve him now and stay in it until you can't serve him any, lo any longer because you're in the grave. I mean, I mean it. Let's go. We become weaker. We become unable. We become feeble. We shake. We get tired easier. We're blind. Things don't work. The ears don't work. The eyes don't work. We're worn out. Sometimes you just need to stop saying it. Because everybody's tired. I'm so tired. Why? Why do we say that? Is anybody listening to me? <laughs> I know you're tired. Everybody's tired. Everybody's tired. This world is whomping you. Yeah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Stand and having done all to stand, he's going to do things and gird up your loins. Ooh, just let him do so. Because the reality of death is here. Allow him. Old Roe Porter, let's stop trying and let's start trusting. Trying, trade it in, trusting. Trust him. Just let him have his way. Trust him. He say, it's so easy for you to say, big guy. You know, you, you know, I trusted him to get me fat, and I need to trust him to let me lose weight. You know, as I said the word let, no, he wants me to. I need to take better care of myself. I tell you what, this extra few pounds on my little tiny tummy, my legs hurt. I don't like that. My body hurts. I don't like that. 
Well, then do something about it, Mark. You have the free will in Jesus Christ to do something. You have a liberty in Christ. Do something about it. Get closer to him. Have better worship time. Allow him. Trust him. He will take care of you. And stop eating all that chocolate. <laughs> Verses 8 through 12. Here we go. Very simply. Here's more lessons from the wise. Watch this. Vanity of vanities. I told you it's going to show up again. Say it to preacher. All is vanity. He reminds us and interjects it back in the midst of telling us to remember God. He says in verse number 9, 10, here we go. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many Proverbs. Remember, he taught with Proverbs a lot of times. He wrote a lot of Proverbs, but also times he would just put out an issue of life before us and then go back and forth in an argument. Verse number 10, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words. I love this. And that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Oh, that's good. The words of the wise are as goads, as nails. I mean, goads, they, they get you, they hit you. It goes, mm. sometimes why we close the Bible. The nails fastened by the master of the assembly. Put those nails up in the wall and hang those defining moments with the Lord on there. Because they are given to you by one shepherd. You know who that shepherd is? It's Jesus. Verse number 12, and further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. Do you remember when he used to refer to his son in the book of Proverbs? He brought him back here. Interesting. It says up on the screen this. There are more lessons from the wise. Hang out with wise people. Hang out with them. Talk to them. Ask them a question and listen to them. Stop cutting them off. Let them speak to you. I can't quite figure out how it is that there's wisdom-filled men and women around us. This church is filled with them. And you can avail yourself to that or just do it your way, bang your head against the wall. Well, I'm going to do it myself and show you that I can just trust God. You're a complete contradiction. Since God put that family member in your life in the name of Jesus Christ, why don't you go ask him? Debbie Summers, can you help me with a medical thing? Doc Clement, can you come back into practice so I can come see you? I don't trust anybody else. Just kidding. There's men of wisdom and there's women of wisdom here. Girls, you want to know how to raise some children? There's women everywhere here. They're grandmas. Ask them. Ask grandma. Ask grandma. Or just give her the kids. That's all. It's working, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but tell us you can't give them back. Ooh. See, there's more lessons from the wise. Solomon's saying there's so much here. Let me just add something here. Look at verse number 11 here real quick. There's something to learn here. Or verse number 10. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. There goes on every Sunday when we gather together in the middle of the week, Bible Institute, Bible studies, all kinds of stuff going on. There is men and women that are teaching the Bible. Daughters of the King, you've got your women's conference coming up in a few weeks. There's going to be wisdom being brought out. And they will be acceptable words. I'm praying that the speaker will ask for acceptable words. Pleasing words unto the Lord. Words with grace. There's a lot of books that are written, and that's fine. But when the books that are written that are other than the Word of God take the place of the Word of God and the words of truth, sorry, we're on the wrong track. Listen to the wisdom of Solomon saying, <coughs> as he preaches, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words, not compromising words. It didn't say compromising words. It said acceptable words. I want the audience to hear what you have to say, Lord. I need to get out of the way and let you speak. They need to be inspired words from the word of God. That's what's expired. The Holy Spirit of God is speaking to you, not me. That's lessons from a wise person named Solomon. The preacher claims here that his words are inspired and given to him by God. There are women that teach the Bible beautifully. They're inspired by God. There are young women, younger, uh, excuse me, in the youth group. There are, there are people there. There are people in settings. There are people teaching children. There's one-on-one -on -one stuff going with girls. There's one-on-one -on -one stuff going on with guys. And here's what Solomon's saying. Let the word of God, the goads, 
prod the people to pay attention and pursue the truth. While those nails are that place, as I said earlier, to give them a defining moment. Lastly, verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Simple. Straightforward. But boy, oh boy, these last instructions are tough. Here are these final instructions. Here. So he says here. Right off the bat, in verse number 13, he says, let us, us, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Three things. You want a great message to teach your children? To teach the people in the ministries that you're in? Fear God. Keep his commandments. And remember, you will be judged in verse number 14. You will be. I will be. We need to prepare for that final judgment by doing that which would be pleasing unto the Lord and be completely satisfied with him, to be fully satisfied with him. John 1, 5, one of the reasons why I got saved, and this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and that life is in the Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You need the Son of God to have life. You have to have personal relationship with the Lord, the Son of God. He will give you eternal life. The conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and keep his commandments. First commandment. You better get saved. That's the translation of love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know what? You can't love him, really, without first being in a place where you get saved, be born again. These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and they may believe in the name of the Son of God. He's saying right here, hear the, hope, the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God, keep his commandments, and guess what? Be prepared for a judgment that's coming. Charles Purgeon said this, the eternity of punishment is a thought which crushes the heart. The Lord God is slow to anger, but when he is once aroused to it, as he will be against those who finally reject his son, he will put forth all his omnipotence to crush his enemies. That's our God. He loves so much here, but he's angerful towards sin so much over here. Hear those important things. To be fully satisfied in him, we've pointed out a lot of things in this scripture. I'll give you two simple little personal application lessons in five minutes here to bring it together for you, for us together. You're full of, fully satisfied in him when you see that King David charged Solomon with words that will fully satisfy God's people. Keep his way and keep his word. Where did you come up with that, Pastor? Go to 1 Kings chapter number 2. 1 Kings chapter number 2. It's up on the screen, I believe. 1 Kings 2, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember, we read this months, two or three, four months ago. We read part of this. This is David turning things over to Solomon. Remember, to be fully satisfied in him, you need to grab a handle on what David charged Solomon with, what God is charging you with. He charged him with these words that will satisfy God's people. So I'm just giving you what the word of God says. Keep his way of doing things, his will, his way, and keep his word. That comes from there, but it also comes from David speaking this charge in 1 Kings 2, 1 through 4. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Didn't Solomon talk about going to that long place, that home forever? He got this from dad. Verse 3 
and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. I'm passing on to you, Moses, Joshua. I'm just passing on to you, God. Hey, older people, we need to pass it on. I mean, just simple. Just find an opportunity and pass it on and pass it on and pass it on to all those that are around you. That Moses had God's word in his heart and he knew what he was doing. And he passed it on to Joshua. And again, we got David and we've got Solomon learning this thing. It says that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Sounds like Joshua chapter 1 to me. Verse 4. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Go back to that slide again. King David charged Solomon with words that will fully satisfy God's people. We're God's people. You will be completely satisfied, fully satisfied. There won't be a place in which you don't have satisfaction in the midst of heartache and in the midst of incredible blessing and all the burdens that you're going through and all the life's trials, guess what? You will be and I will be fully satisfied if we keep his way and keep his word. You really will. I promise you will. We will. You've got to give it a try, though. Oh, we're not trying now anymore. We're trusting. You need to trust him. Take God at what he said. And then just put it into practice. It didn't work today. Put it into practice tomorrow. It didn't work tomorrow. Put it into practice the next day. And put it into practice. And put it into practice. And put it into practice. And you're going to hit it one day and go, oh, God's right again. He's always right. You're just waiting for some, like, shooting star. He's really very simply right there all the time putting it before us and saying, I got this little bit, I got this little bit for you, and I got this little bit for you. Just go ahead and keep my way. And then the second one is this. You will be fully satisfied in him, just like Solomon saw when David taught him something else. I'll have you jump ahead so that you're ready for me when I go through this. Psalm 72. Go to Psalm 72. This is my resting place to finish out. Psalm 72. Remember, each time we've applied all of this in the Word of God, it comes back to God's principles teaching you. You need the lessons of God. You and I get bored sometimes, or, oh, this is too much. No, God can never, ever bore you. You say, well, you're boring as a speaker. That's possible. I can see that. But listen to what God's showing you and telling you and teaching you. Because Solomon was given this psalm. All of you that have a King Jimmy right here, check it out. It says in Psalm 72. What's it say underneath that, Psalm 72? Anybody? A psalm for Solomon. Not by Solomon, for him. It is said that David wrote this, but he had to have someone scribe it. Why? Because in the history of the writing of the Word of God by David, it is said that this is chronologically his last words that he penned. And he took the time to tell his son something. He told his son, you're going to be a picture of the son that should come after me. His name is Jesus. Messiah type of psalm. A messianic, pro- prophetic type of psalm. He's going to speak of the king that's coming after him, that God anointed to say, take it. It wasn't any other son. It was Solomon that God said was going to be the next king. And in Psalm 72, we learn that why Solomon, why Solomon was taught this by his father, that there's only one who will satisfy, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that will satisfy. It's throughout Psalm 72. It's your homework this week. Read this one through a few times. It'll get you. Because it's speaking of David's incredible crying out as a prayer unto his God in heaven on behalf of his son. And I'm giving you a song. I'm giving you a psalm, Solomon. 
It says in verse number one, give thy king, give the king thy judgments, O God, in thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people in little hills by righteousness. This is what happens in Solomon's kingdom. He has incredibly great peace and incredible favor from God the first few years before everybody sees what they have given him and now they want what they've given him. You continue down, you see a little bit further. Verse number eight, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Who is that? That's Solomon in picture, but who is that? That's Jesus Christ. Look at what he's saying here. Verse number 12, for he shall deliver the needy for when, he's, when he crieth. The poor also, him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and the needy. He shall save the souls of the needy. Who saves souls? Jesus. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. Verse 14, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. Is that powerful or what? This is a song for Solomon to realize that really the one that's going to come after David to be the king is Jesus. You just happen to be standing instead over the nation of Israel for a period of time. Remember, thy creator in the days of thy youth. We go out of verse 18, 19, and 20, and we're done. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. This is the Lord God. And blessed be his glorious name forever. That's not Solomon, that's God. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Whew, that's how he ends it. He says, Solomon, let me give you some last words. If you go to 2 Samuel, you see some things. You go to 1 Kings, you see some things. But this is incredible. In the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, I ask you today in an invitation time as we go to pray, what's up on the screen? Are you allowing God right here to be the only one that fully satisfies? Jesus is the only one that satisfies. God's way and God's word is the only thing that will fully, fully, fully satisfy you will need not drink another drop of water, he told the Samaritan woman. You'll never have to eat of any other bread, disciples. I want the spirit bread. I'm the living bread. You'll never have to eat or drink again because you'll be fully satisfied in me. Why don't you please stand as we pray? The music is going to be playing right now in the background. I would like you to bow your heads for a word of prayer. And I'm going to pray, and as you are standing, maybe you just want to come for the invitation time. You want to come up and pray? Go right ahead. The altar area is all yours. Our Father in heaven, we close out with this invitation time. It's just as important as any piece and part of our gathering over the last 70-ish minutes. I pray for your people right now in the name of Jesus that you will speak to them specifically and clearly about where they're getting and where we're getting our satisfaction. May we respond and say, Lord God, I need to be fully satisfied in you, Jesus. Fully satisfied in your way, Lord God. Fully satisfied in your word. God, work in this time of invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.